Hello, this is John from TC Math Academy, and here is the question. Do you know what to do? Well, hopefully you uh, understand the problem. We have the square root of 3 over 7. In algebra, this is not allowed. Okay, so let's suppose you're doing a problem and you end up with this uh, square root as your final answer. If you turn this in, you would get some, uh, probably some significant points off your question. Let's, uh, let's say this question here was worth 10 points. Your teacher might give you like say six out of 10, and then you would be very upset. You'd probably be something like, you know, what are you talking about, Mr. Math teacher? You're so mean. Why'd you take away so many points? Well, listen, again, this is not correct, and there's a very good reason why. But anyways, if you know how to simplify or fix this situation, Go ahead and put your answer into the comment section. I'm going to show you the correct answer in just one second, and then we're going to walk through exactly what you need to know in order to simplify this square root uh, situation. Uh, also, if you need math help with the course you're taking, test prep, or homeschooling, make sure to check out my math help program at tcmathacademy.com. You can find a link to it in the description below, and if this video helps you out, don't forget to like and subscribe, as that definitely helps me out. Okay, so the square root of 3 over 7, how can you simplify that? Or if you simplified this square root, what would be the correct answer or the equivalent answer? Well, here it is right here. It is the square root of 21 over 7. Okay, so if you're taking any sort of algebra course, hopefully, you know, you knew what to do. Uh, if you are in algebra, this is absolutely a skill you need to know. And if you need help with algebra beyond uh, this particular video on square roots and radicals, because that's what we're talking about here, this symbol in mathematics is a radical symbol. Now, you can refer to it as a square root uh, symbol, but if I go like this, and I'm saying uh, this expression right here, this is not the square root of 8, this is the cube root of 8, but this symbol here is a radical. So if you're like, hey, what, uh, where do I study this in my math course or my algebra course? Well, you would likely have some sort of chapter or unit on radical expressions, uh, equations, et cetera, et cetera. Very, very important part of algebra. But anyways, this is the right answer. And if you got that right, let's go ahead and give you a nice little happy face, an A plus a 100%, and a few stars. So you can tell your friends and family that you know how to simplify a radical expression, okay? And the key here is uh, the key to doing this problem is something called rationalizing the denominator. Rationalizing the denominator. I'll get back to that in just one second. But let's go ahead and kick off this uh, problem, or the solution to this problem, rather, by uh, taking a look at the situation. First of all, we have the square root of 3 over 7. Now, I said this, this right here is not correct. Well, there is a property of square roots or radicals that you can write one big square root like this, and we're talking about fractions here, we can write um, uh, the square root of a fraction as two individual square roots. In other words, we can have the square root of the numerator over the square root of the denominator, and that's equivalent to one big square root over this numerator and denominator, just like this. Now, these would be properties of radicals and square roots. This is one of them. There are others, and hopefully you knew this. Now, if this is like you know, confusing to you, well, you, you know, definitely need to uh, kind of study more on this subject. It's very, very important stuff in um, algebra. Okay, so let's go ahead and talk about why this uh, situation right here is not a good situation. So we're taking the square root of 3 over 7, and this is equivalent to the square root of 3 being, uh, that the square root of 3 over the square root of 7. We're taking a number, okay, namely that number right here is the square root of 3, and we're dividing it by an irrational number, okay? So let's, let's just make this easier. Let's say I had something like uh, 4 over the square root of 7, okay? Now, 4, this type of number is what we call a rational number, okay? It's a lovely whole number, an integer value, but this type of number right here, the square root of 7, is what we call an irrational number. But what does that mean? Well, this should be basic algebra 101, but uh, probably a lot of you may have forgot precisely what an uh, irrational number means. It means that the square root of 7 is some sort of decimal. Okay, we can write this decimal out, right? And as we write this decimal out, the uh, digits of the decimal, okay, that we write out, 
do not repeat and they do not terminate. In other words, this goes on and on and on and on and on forever into infinity uh, and, and, and to get the entire uh, decimal uh, equivalent of the square root of seven, you would have to have a piece of paper that's infinitely long and a lot of different pens and pencil and a lot of time in order to do it. So effectively, it's impossible, right? Because the digits uh, don't repeat and they never terminate, okay? So now if we think about it, uh, let's say, you know, we're trying to divide something by something that never uh, terminates or repeats, okay? So like here, let's kind of use a pizza example, okay? So again, we know that square root of seven is a rational number. If I said, hey, let's take this pizza, okay, hopefully everyone likes pizza, and let's divide it into four sections. All right, no problem, four sections. Four, okay, this pizza uh, being divided by uh, four, okay, that makes sense to us because we can divide this pizza into four equal parts, okay? Uh, so division, right? But we're dividing again by a rational number. So now let's take this uh, pizza, okay, situation, and let's divide it by a number that never quite ends and never repeats. Okay, so I'm like, well, I don't know exactly how to deal with this situation. I don't know how to split this up because this decimal keeps going on and on and on and on. Okay, so hopefully that gives you some sense of why this is not allowed. But the bottom line is this. Uh, when you have an irrational number, like the square root of 7, in the denominator, this is not allowed in algebra. So we have to fix this up. And the way we fix this up is uh, using a simple technique called rationalizing the denominator. Okay, so let's go take a look at that now. This is not that difficult. Okay, but I wanted to spend some time there so you understood why this is not an acceptable situation. All right, so we have the square root of 3 over 7. We know that that's equal to the square root of 3 over the square root of 7. So here's the way I want to kind of start this off. So if we take this square root of 3 over uh, the square root of 7 and I multiply it by 1, what's the answer? Well, if we take any number and we multiply it by 1, we just get back to that number. Okay, this is what we call an identity property in mathematics, but you don't need to know that. It's just common sense, right? 2 times 1 is 2. Any number times 1 is uh, the number. Okay, so we're going to multiply the square root, of, uh, square root of 3 over the square root of 7 times 1, but we're going to use a fancy 1. Okay, we're not going to just use this 1. We're going to use another type of 1. Okay, so the 1 that we're going to use is this. Okay, so any number divided by itself is what? Okay, well, let's just uh, kind of uh, think about this for a second. Any number, we have the square root of 7 divided by the square root of 7. Any number divided by itself is, of course, 1. Okay, so this uh, right here, square root of 7 over square root of 7 is 1. So we're not breaking anything. So we're going to take this uh, situation, square root of 3 over square root of 7, and we're going to multiply it by the, uh, whatever the denominator is. This is the square root of 7. We're going to take that square root of 7 and divide it by square root of 7. So we're going to multiply both the numerator and denominator by this denominator. Okay, so this is called rationalizing the denominator. Okay, but I want you to understand that we're not really breaking anything. We're just using a little uh, math trick here to get rid of the square root in the denominator. All right, so again, if we when you see a radical down here, your square root, square root of 7, we're going to multiply the denominator by square root of 7 and the numerator by the square root of 7 like so. All right, so let's go and do that right now. So here we have uh, three uh, square root of 3 over square root of 7. We're going to multiply both the numerator and denominator by the square root of 7. So let's go ahead and multiply across, right? We're talking about fractions. So we multiply the respective numerators and denominators. So the square root of 3 times the square root of 7, these are factors. And just like the... Uh, with the fraction, we have a property of uh, square roots and radicals uh, when we talk about mul multiplying. Okay, so if we have two square roots, we can write um, the uh, product of the square root of 3 times the square root of 7 this way. We can write those factors, okay, underneath one big square root. So the square root of 3 times the square root of 7 is uh, equal to the square root of 3 times 7. And the square root of 7 times the square root of 7. Again, we're dealing with fractions. Remember, when you're multiplying fractions, you simply multiply the respective numerators and denominators. So the square root of 7 times the square root of 7 is the square root of 7 times 7. All right, so let's go ahead and continue on. 
So now we know we have the square root of 3 times 7. That is the same thing as the square root of 21. And now down in the denominator, we have the square root of 7 times 7. That is the square root of 49. But check this out. Here is where the big payoff happens. We're like, boy, we got to get rid of that square root down in the, the denominator. And finally, we can because the square root of 49 is actually a rational number. Okay, here, when we take the square root of 49, it is equal to 7. Okay, so this is not an irrational number. It is a rational number, and there you go. All right, so we have the square root of 21 over 7. Remember, it's not a problem having an irrational number in the numerator. It's the denominator that we don't want to have that radical in or that square root or that irrational number to be more precise. So this is uh, an example of rationalizing the denominator, simplifying a square root fraction uh, like the problem we just did right here. Now, this gets even more interesting when you have a situation like this. Let me show you something like the, let's say we have 1 over the square root of 2 plus 3. Well, we have an irrational number down here in the denominator. How do we deal with this? Well, we have to use something. Uh, well, it's basically the same idea as rationalizing what we just did here. But we have to use something called the conjugate. And that is for an additional video. Again, if you are taking any sort of algebra course, you need to know this, okay? But hopefully this little video helped you out. And if that is the case, don't forget to like and subscribe. And with that being said, I definitely wish you all the best in your mathematics adventures. Thank you for your time and have a great day.